Rappers with 700 fans are shooting each other. People think prank channels should harass people. And over 240 exclusives with a new one every week when you support the habit at patreon.com slash dosabuckley. Fans. Aren't they the worst? No, wait, come back. I don't mean you. Oh, God, I can't afford to lose any more. No, but over the years, almost definitely to my own detriment, rather than feeding into it, I've actively discouraged any cult-like behavior among my audience. You don't have a fandom name, I don't ask you to fight my battles for me, and I take steps to stop people from brigading the subjects of my videos. The most fan thing to happen to me was when I said I liked Lily Allen, and a bunch of people went to a Lily Allen video and commented, So, this is something Buckley actually likes? Man, what a terrible thing. We gave a Lily Allen song a few extra views and some engagement. By the way, I don't think I really like Lily Allen anymore. But anyway, as many pop stars have shown us over the years, the more successful you are, the more cult-like your audience becomes. Which brings us to the newest sensation, Chapel Roan. Similar to Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel's been plugging away at music for a while, but suddenly hit it big this year. However, unlike Sabrina, Chapel had no prior experience being in the spotlight. She's not a former Disney or Nickelodeon girl. She wasn't the best friend on a TV show when she was 15. She's some chick from Missouri. So, that overnight success has been a little more difficult for her to cope with. We'll get to that. But first, I don't get the big deal. Her music sounds pretty much like Olivia Rodrigo's to me, another 20-year-old influenced by their parents' CD collection. Every song of Chapel's that I've heard so far, you could picture The Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller dancing to very easily. That's not meant to be a compliment, by the way. I fucking hate John Hughes. However, unlike Olivia or Sabrina, Chapel isn't exactly TV pretty. She's not really ugly either, but she's got a face that, uh, you know how when you see someone yawn, it makes you want to yawn? <laughs> yeah. Chapel's face has that effect on you without yawning. But she knows this, and she's leaned into that fact and became the weird is cool now girl, wearing face paint and luchador masks, giving me very confusing feelings about Rey Mysterio Jr. She's also said many of her outfits are inspired by drag, so she's a girl dressing up as a guy dressing up as a girl. LOL, so random! So, this has resulted in her getting the fans who aren't like other girls, racking up 43 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Each one a unique little angel, I'm sure. But this brings us to the problem I hinted at a minute ago. She wasn't ready for 43 million fucking weirdos knowing who she is. So, in mid-July, she shares in a podcast interview that she's taking a step back from doing any extra promotion to make herself more famous because people started trying to figure out where her parents live and where her sister works. We're treated to some Reddit sleuthing here. I mean, if you want to know about a weirdo's weird fans, who better to ask than the weirdos on Reddit? They explain there was a relatively well-known Instagram account named Midwest Princess HQ. And one of the admins, a freak named Nova, was finding and posting this info. The other admins tried to boot her out, she gained control and booted all the other admins out. Like, is this not the most crazy, childish bullshit over a fucking pop singer or what? Nut jobs need to get jobs. So anyway, over a month goes by since the podcast, and clearly things have not cooled down. As Chapel posts this less than calm video on TikTok. Here's a clip. I don't want whatever the fuck you think you're supposed to be entitled to whenever you see a celebrity. I don't give a fuck if you think it's selfish of me to say no for a photo or for your time or to for a hug. That's not normal. That's weird. It's weird how people think that you know a person just because you see them online or you listen to the art they make. That's fucking weird. Now, I ain't no big city PR person, but I don't imagine telling your fans, don't fucking come near me, you're weird for wanting a picture with me, is exactly in the how to increase your fan base playbook. But 
it needs to be said. And every other pop star wishes they had the balls to say this, but don't, because they're so afraid of anything that might shave a few seconds off that 15 minutes of fame pretty much everyone gets in pop music. Today's Olivia Rodrigo, Sabrina Carpenter, and Chapel Roan could very, very easily be tomorrow's Jordan Sparks, Leona Lewis, and Natasha Bedingfield. Who, who, and who? Yeah. She triples down on this a day or two later over on Instagram, saying this among a seven-image post. I want to love my life, be outside, giggle with my friends, go to the movie theater, feel safe, and do all the things every single person deserves to do. Please stop touching me. Please stop being weird to my family and friends. And also tells people, don't call me Kaylee, which is her real first name. Surprise, it's not Chapel. Basically, what she wants to tell you is, she's not your friend, you don't know her, you don't know who Kaylee is. If you want to see Chapel, you can do so from 20 to 200 meters away for $300 in Council Bluffs, Iowa in October. Well, that's too bad, Chapel. It's your job. Isn't this the price of fame? No idea who she is anyway. Without your fans, you're nothing. And when you're drop-off, if you've alienated a lot of the for being fanatic, you will rue that day. Thanks, dyslexic Skeletor. <laughs> you will rue the day. No clue who Tuff this is, but imagine following one of your favorite artists for years and finally getting a chance to meet them. All you would like is a photo to remember the moment, and maybe you let the excitement get to you a little and went for a quick hug. These people need to remember, the fans getting to meet them is a one-time deal. The artist is the one making all the money, and as far as I'm concerned, doing photos and such should be part of the job. Your job for making millions is deal with a photo or hug. Might have a few hundred in an hour or two. The fan gets one shot, one opportunity to make a memory last a lifetime. Give them that and they'll be fans for life. Alright, calm down there, Slim Very Shady. Yes, photo ops are part of the job. When they're scheduled and paid for. And even then, they can still say, Yeah, I don't want to be touched. Well, this person feels that, as part of being a celebrity, if a few hundred people in an hour or two want you to just drop what you're doing to be photographed and give them the human touch their families never would, then you should do that. You owe them. Imagine writing all that and then not seeing the absurdity of celebrity in the first place, by the way. That you feel a human being could make you lose control of yourself. That you couldn't stop yourself from hugging them because... You like things they made? You read that back to yourself, and if you still don't see the problem, read it again, this time in front of a mirror. If you're famous, you can pull your F-Starking head in and accept that you're only famous because of your fans. I don't give a F-Stark if you're uncomfortable. Find a new way to make money. In summary, she should just stiffu. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. One could argue that Practically every job only exists to some degree because of customers spending money. A burger flipper wouldn't receive a paycheck from McDonald's if thousands of people didn't come in every day for a burger. The guy who puts the doors on cars has no job without the 15 million people who buy those cars every year. People who work in offices, their paycheck is dependent on the companies who own those offices actually selling something, a product or subscription. The money flowing from some other human being's wallet into another's is what allows everyone to have a job. So, if a thousand people all showed up at, uh, let's see here, Jeff Spire's house in, uh, oh no, I'm not gonna look that up, I'm not a fucking monster, to be like, Oh my god, Jeff, I love the plumbing work you did on the new high-rise downtown. I've never seen piss flow so smoothly through pipes. Can I have your photograph and signature? How do you think Jeff would feel? Or maybe they find out where Kevin Wilkerson is having dinner with his wife and children. Wait, are you THE Kevin Wilkerson? Employee of the month at Dick Lick Ford? Oh, I can't contain my excitement, I need to hug you! Stop eating your meal and interact with me, and then these other few hundred people that all showed up because an Instagram account told us where you'd be. It'll only take an hour or two. It's part of the job. We're big fans of your sales techniques. Come on, I bought a car. You owe me. Let me follow you back to your home. You wouldn't want that, right? So why is it part of the job for a famous person? The answer is, it's not. 
You only think so because, for some reason, when you obsess over every detail of a person's life to the point where you would go out of your way to meet them, even though you're a total stranger to them, if they're an entertainer, it's called being a fan. But if they're, say, a dental hygienist, it's called stalking. Just enjoy their work and be normal. You want a hug from someone who doesn't know you? It's about $1,000 an hour in Nevada brothels. More if you want them to wear a lucha mask. Uh, or so I'm told. That's where I would have liked to end this video, but then, a few days later, she went ahead and cancelled three of her shows, fucking over paying customers because they'd interfere with her rehearsing for and doing the VMAs. So, chapel. I get not wanting to take photos and hug people, but you gotta do some celebrity things. Like, show up for the gigs that people paid to see? But if you really don't want to be a celebrity, keep that shit up. You'll be back to doing shows for 50 people at the Missouri State Fair in no time. Maybe the Goo Goo Dolls will let you take a picture with them.